Thank you. All right. Well, very nice of you all to join me here. I'm in Greece. So, as I was saying earlier, it's nice and sunny here. I actually, I was on the beach this morning. So, I came back to do the webinar. So, uh, I've got to say, you know, it's not quite as good as being on the beach, but uh, but never mind, we're going to have a nice time anyway, aren't we? So, um, we're going to be talking about listening, singing, and acting it out, how very young learners can learn English through story-based activities, and we'll be talking about learning stars. And... Some of you, well, I've already seen that I've, I've actually met one of the, one of, one of the ladies here. Um, some of you might have been to, uh, attended another webinar of mine. Uh, if you haven't, my name is Jean Perrett. These are two photos of me with my two darling granddaughters. Actually, that they were taken, um, so, so this is the first one with me and little Margie. And she is nearly two now. And in fact, in about two weeks' time, she's going to have a baby sister, so I will have three darling granddaughters then. And the other one is me with little Ariadne, and that is Ariadne on her second birthday party. So you can see they are the light of our lives. And uh, obviously, apart from anything else, gives us lots more inspiration, and you remember about really how children learn language. You remember it all over again. I've got four children of my own. I still call them children. Even though the children now have children, I still call them the kids. Um, but when you're doing it the second time around with the grandchildren, it's, it's really fascinating to see um, how they learn, and I think it really does help. So I hope that, you know, now I'm a grandma, I hope that maybe I can share even more thoughts with you. Anyway, so those are the girls, our girlies. And, okay, so Learning Stars is a new three-level course for young learners by myself, Jean Perrett, and by Jill Layton, who I think most of you were in Jill's session earlier. All right. So, and so, in other words, I always say that this is a course book which has been written by two beautiful blondes. That's all you need to know, really. That's all you need to know. All right, so that's me and that's Jill. And uh, as I was saying earlier to Henry, she is great, great fun, great fun. So we had a lot of fun doing this course. Of course, we took it seriously as well, but we did have a lot of fun. Okay, and the other person who is very important in Horsey, and he is actually here, he's here in person, Horsey is always very excited to be doing a webinar, he loves webinars, he always looks forward to them, so Horsey is our main character who's uh, in Learning Stars, and uh, he's also available as a puppet. I say he's available as a puppet. I never know in which countries he's available as a puppet. I hope he's available as a puppet in Ukraine. Um, well, anyway, if not, uh, you have to make a sock puppet or something. Okay, so that's horsey. All right, so we're going to be... Um, oh, it is, it is. They are, uh, they're, they're available. The, the, the puppet is available, available in a say. That's good, lovely. So, um, we're going to be starting off to think about learning through short stories. So, um, this, uh, this page here that you can see is from Learning Stars 1. There's Little Learning Stars, which is for the very young learners, two, three-year-olds. And then this is from Learning Stars 1, which I think would be um, the, uh, one of the books that you would, in your classes, you'd be more interested in doing. Um, and as you can see, there are stories here. We've got the title, we've got the text in the title, but there isn't the text on the story in Learning Stars 1, okay? We're not, so what we're really focusing on um, in, in, this, in this instance is then um, uh, acquiring the language through hearing it and through saying it and through repeating it and through it becoming so a natural process. As I was saying, um, uh, you know, actually how we naturally acquire language as children. Um, the, the title is there, of course, for your benefit as well. Um, and this is a, a little story about a caterpillar and a butterfly, and it's I Can Fly. 
So, um, you know, I'm sure you can probably imagine the kind of uh, text is going to be very, very simple. So a caterpillar and a butterfly, the caterpillar, of course, he can't fly, can he? So let's just have a look at the little text here. Um, so I've got the story up there as well. So Bella is the butterfly, and she says, hello, caterpillar. Caterpillar is a bit fed up. Hello, Bella. I can't jump. I can't hop. I can't catch. I can't roll. Bella, then, then all of a sudden, he starts to change, you see. And so then my, uh, my, he's, he's changing into a chrysalis, and then in the plane five, he's a butterfly. Bella, you're a butterfly! I can fly! We can fly! Yes, you can fly! All right. So very, very, very simple language. But of course, what we're doing here is we're obviously practicing the verb can and can't. Um, but of course, we're also teaching the children about the life cycle of a butterfly. And that will be what they will be most interested in, probably, in how a butterfly changes from a caterpillar, then it goes into the chrysalis mode, and then it emerges from the chrysalis mode to become a butterfly. So, um, obviously, with your, with your little ones, um, it's much better to focus on the things that they are actually interested in, um, rather than pointing out to them the difference between can and can't. Uh, at this age, um, they don't really, they don't really uh, distinguish between the difference between can and can't in terms of actually saying the word. Um, they, so, uh, I think these things come gradually. Obviously, they will get the, they will understand that can't means that you can't do something. But um, actually making, insisting on them, you know, um, being able to write the difference or read the difference at this stage, I think is not as important as then getting the main vocabulary and then the whole concept of a butterfly, of a caterpillar becoming a chrysalis, becoming a, a butterfly. So you're going to be working around this subject. So every, every small text is rich in what you can do with it. But it's very simple. It's always very simple in the language. And as you can see as well, we have what we would think of as being child-friendly vocabulary here. Um, so children jumping, hopping, catching, and rolling. You know, I can't roll is something that an adult wouldn't say. But it is something that would be important to a little child if they can do a roly-poly, a forward roll, or not. So very, very simple language. So let's see what you can do with this. Well, what you can do is with any of these stories that I'm going to be showing you, is you can use very, very simple drama activities. And the number one reason is that children have an innate desire, in other words, a desire that is with them from birth, to play and to act out stories of their lives. So little young children, one of their favorite games when they're very young, what they like to play is mummies and daddies, or mummies and babies. In other words, they're just acting out exactly what they do every day, but they do it naturally through a drama activity. When they start to go to school, their favorite activity usually is, their favorite drama activity usually is playing schools. So then they're, they're not necessarily having this, um, it helps them to develop their imagination, but they start off with what they know, okay? And so we can use this then acting out what they actually do on a day-to-day -day level. And we can use this a lot in our language lessons. All right. Now, drama also gives children a safe place to experiment, express, and experience new ideas, concepts, and emotions. And that is why children are naturally drawn to it. So if, if something has been puzzling um, them, they will act it out. Or if they, like, they might put the baby to sleep. Maybe they like the way that mummy puts them to sleep. And they'll act it out. They'll get a dolly. They'll kiss the dolly goodnight. And they'll say, night, 
they put the dolly to bed. And then they'll put the dolly, take the dolly up again, and they do it again and again and again. And of course, so, so all of these things, they're experimenting. What does it feel like? How did I feel like? Going through their heads are all sorts of different emotions. And drama is a very safe place to, uh, to act out all these um, different concepts and emotions and ideas. And then, of course, drama activities encourage group work. Now then, when we've got very young learners, like four or five-year-olds or six-year-olds, um, then they are um, part of our lesson is um, them learning to work together. Part of the lesson is to do with learning language. A lot of the lesson is to do with learning skills, which I will be coming on to. Um, but a lot of it is about them learning how to get on with each other. And one of the ways that they can learn to get on with each other and to cooperate is through these little very simple drama activities. Now, if we use them in the classroom, drama activities bring context to language. Yeah? So if you are, for example, um, teaching some food words, and then you act out a picnic or a supermarket, it makes those food words um, seem real. Where are we going to use them? At the breakfast table, at the lunch table, in the supermarket, at the picnic, in our lunch box. And, and we use all of those different contexts in a learning stars. So if we act them out, we immediately make the language seem real and bring it to life. And this is the most important thing, that it's not just words that they hear, they don't know what they're about. It's about language that they can actually start to use straight away in their daily lives. So it starts to make sense to them. And then, of course, drama can involve the whole child. In other words, it's a holistic activity. So it involves, obviously, their physical bodies, because they're doing things. And as we know, our children love to be up and about and doing stuff. And it involves their minds, they've got to think about what they're doing, what they're saying. It involves their senses, their emotions, their memories. What did they do yesterday? That's a memory for them. What did they do last week? You know, if you did last summer with a very young learner, that's quite a long time ago. That's maybe, you know, a third of their life ago. Um, their dreams, their imaginations. These are all things that can be brought out in drama. And then, of course, drama activities nurture happiness and playfulness in the classroom as well. And this, is, this should never be underestimated, that if a, if a child is happy uh, while he or she is learning whatever they are learning, then they will learn it better and they will remember it better. You don't learn things when you're sad, or, and you certainly never learn things if you're stressed or you're tense. Um, so, uh, and playfulness, um, as I was saying, as a grandmother, um, I'm watching again my, my little grandchildren, and of course, all their, uh, in, uh, a large part of their day is to do with playing and things like that. And, and this is how you play, and we, while we're playing, we're acquiring our language. And this is what we want to encourage in our classrooms as well. So, and we, to, to use these drama activities, we can use different aspects of any story or any theme, and we can use them as vehicles for dynamic, interactive teaching. And it's this dynamic, interactive teaching that is what our goal is, especially at this low level. And the things that we can think about in any drama activity are these. We can think about character. Okay. So, for instance, you might be a grandma, you might be a pirate, you might be a, a fairy, you might be a giant, you might be an old man, you might be a bus conductor or a fireman or anything. You've got to start to think, what would that, how would that person move? How would they speak? So then we think about voice as well. And when I say we think about voice, um, uh, I mean that we can practice saying very simple things again and again by using different voices. So, for example, if we went back, let's just go back, let's just quickly go back to this slide. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, let's go, let's go back to this slide here. There's Bella the butterfly. All right, how might she speak? All right, so first of all, the, the children might just say, hello, caterpillar. 
And then you start to see a bunch of butterflies, you know, it's a bit like a fairy. Hello, caterpillar! Hello! And then the caterpillar. How will the caterpillar speak? Hello, below. I don't, I, you know, you, the children will think about it. The children will think about it because um, apart from the voice, we then have the atmosphere as well. What sort of atmosphere uh, are you going to be creating in this little story? And of course, there are all sorts of ways that you can create atmosphere. You can do it through soundscapes. You can do it through. You can you can all pretend to be um, little creatures in the, in the woods while they're saying hello, caterpillar, and you can all make little leaf or flower or bird noise. While you're while you're while you're just saying this very very simple uh, language, and then there's costumes of course. But when I say costumes, I don't mean anything elaborate. Don't start to get the parents you know buying stuff or making stuff. I just mean like a scarf or an old old clothes or anything you've got around that you can use to quickly transform yourself into something else. And then emotion. So of course with emotion you can say things in different ways. So um, if, uh, if Caterpillar is feeling sad, how will he say, hello, Bella? He won't say, hello, Bella. Okay, they so say it as, you're, as if you're sad. Hello, Bella. You can say it as if you're angry. Hello, Bella. You can say it as if you're excited. Hello, Bella. So you can say the same language again and again and again. This is drilling. This is drilling language. But it's drilling language in a creative way. They don't realize they're drilling it. Children need so much repetition. Um, but you can drill it doing all these different things. And then, of course, movement. So children, we, we nearly always uh, move when we're speaking. So even if we're just on a chair, we'll still be speaking. Now, of course, in our, in our language classrooms, we often do have the children at chairs behind desks. So it's nice if they if you make a bit of space in your classroom where they can stand up and move as they're speaking. Because it's very different just sort of sitting there saying, Hello, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And it's completely different if you do it as you really do. It's be, oh hello, how are you? Oh well, well, I'm fine, thank you, how are you? So you st this is all acting. This is acting. This is a drama activity. But as you see, it's incredibly simple. You don't have to be a drama expert. And then, of course, you can use music as well to add rhythm. If you're adding rhythm to the language, that will help to make it more memorable. And you can use very simple props as well. So you can use things like paper plates, paper cups, magic wands, hats, uh, sticks. I don't know, all sorts of different things. You can use nothing expensive. You don't have to go out and buy anything for this. Just use what you've got, spoons, you know. Whatever is available. All right, so let's have a look at this. Uh, uh, this is another story, and this is um, with Horsey. Oh, oh, Horsey wants to come and see this. He likes it when he's in a story. All right, so there's Horsey, and there's Bella the butterfly, and this is called There Are Friends. Now then, what do you think the vocabulary focus focus of this? Look at the pictures. Put in the put in your chat box. What do you think the vocabulary, the main vocabulary fo focus of this is? And you see the pictures. Look at the look at in the pictures. Uh, exactly. Yes. Exactly. Okay. So the the main vocabulary focus is animals. Yeah. So we've got ducks. We've got cows. We've got hens roosting in the trees. We've got goats, and we've got cats. Okay. So there's Bella and Butterfly, uh, Bella, Butterfly, and Horsey. All right, and Bella, so they're walking home, and she's a bit surprised every time she sees these animals. <gasps> what a very horsey. Ducks, Bella. They're our friends. <gasps> what a very horsey. They're cows, Bella. They're our friends. What a very Bella. Oh, sorry, what are they, Bella? Oh, and then the same one with hens and then with goats, that's right. What are they, Bella? They're hens, horsey, they're our friends. What are they, uh, Bella? What are they, horsey? They're goats, Bella, they're our friends. And then it's horsey's turn to get frightened now because it's gone dark and the cat's eyes are shining and he doesn't know what they are. <gasps> what are they, Bella? They're cats, horsey. They're our friends. Hello, cats. Hello, horsey. Meow. Hello, Bella. 
All right. So masses and masses of repetition there. And of course, these stories come at the end of the unit. So you will already have done lots of work on learning those um, vocabulary items. So ducks and cows and goats and hens and cats, they, are, they won't by this point. They won't be new vocabulary for the children. So then they can just enjoy the, the, the language. And they, as you can see, it's chunks of language. They're ducks. They are our friends. Okay. You don't have to go into the grammar at all at this stage. That can come later, next year, the, the year after. The thing is to get them generally understanding and enjoying English at this stage. Um, and here's, and here's, an, here's another part of that unit here where um, we've got another little story. Oh, no, this is a different story in a different unit. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, and here we've got, um, this is the end of the food unit. Yeah, this is the end of the food unit. And um, here we've got some naughty foxes have taken away the children's picnic. You can see them taking away the food. But luckily our friends come to the rescue. So here's a bee bringing honey. Hang on, let me just see if I put up, yes, I did put up the text. Okay, there's a bee bringing honey, and there's a cow bringing milk, and there's a hen bringing eggs, and there's a tree bringing apples as well. So uh, here's the text for that. So look, a bee. I've got honey. I've got honey for you. Thank you. I like honey. Look, a cow. I've got milk and cheese. I've got milk and cheese for you. Thank you. I like milk and cheese. And then the same with it. Sorry, that's a, uh, a typing mistake. There should be thank you, not just thank. <laughs> and then the same with the hen. So it'll be, uh, look, a hen. I've got eggs. I've got eggs for you. Thank you. I like eggs. And etc. And then the tree. So uh, um, obviously with this, this will go on to a whole load of project work. So that you can then, from that, uh, again, this is the end of the unit. They've, they've learned all those food words. And now you can concentrate on them doing projects and talking about what we get from different animals. Where do we get honey from? We get it from bees. Where do we get milk and cheese from? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So, um, so, whoops, sorry, sorry, I should have switched off my phone. Sorry, sorry. Hang on, wait. So I've got to put the phone down. <laughs> sorry about that, Henry. Let me unplug my phone. Okay. Um. I usually remember that, sorry. Uh, anyway, so, yes, yeah, so then you can go on to project work. So that you're there, there's a, it's, a, it's a fertile, it's a fertile book. It gives you lots of different ideas um, because the children, again, will be more interested in the concept of where you get apples from, where we get milk and cheese from, what do cows give us, etc. Then they will, for instance, with I've got. I've got is not intrinsically interesting to the children. Um, okay, so uh, now then in the language presentations, in the language presentations, again we've got 4C here. And let me just see what we've got here. That's right, okay, all right. So this is, uh, this is the, the my body part of the presentation. And um, they're looking at what parts of the body they've got, you see. So, of course, Horsey and Bella and, uh, uh, sorry, and Lily and Jack have got different parts. So, let's have a look here. So, look, Horsey's all pleased. He sees himself in the mirror. Look, Horsey, it's you. Oh, I've got two eyes. I've got two ears. I've got a nose. I've got a mouth. And then Lily's, oh please, I've got fingers, and Jack's showing his, I've got toes. And Horsey, I haven't got fingers and toes. You've got a tail. <gasps> yes, I've got a tail. So lots, and then Horsey is very kind. He's very kind, he likes his friends very, very much. And because he feels sorry for his friends, they haven't got a tail, he makes them nice tail out of, out of paper streamers, so they've all got tails. So again, uh, this is this is how we actually present the language. And again, here you can see that there isn't the the vocabulary items. The words are not on the page in Learning Stars One. In Learning Stars Two, they are. Um, but it goes in, and they practice it like this. So then, of course, we build this up, and you go through songs, 
There we are. And we've got a lovely song here. So unfortunately, when we do webinars, you can't hear the songs. But um, let's just make up a tune for it. So my ears, my eyes, my ears, my mouth, my nose, and my fingers and my toes. Look at me, look at me, look at me and dance with me. And then what we do, we start to take the words out. My ears, my ears, my eyes, my ears, my mouth, my nose, and my fingers and my toes. Look at me, look at me, look at me and dance with me. It, I think it's a completely different tune, but I can't remember anyway. But something like that. So you can see this will be another big focus of what you're, what you're doing in the lesson. You know, the, the main, the main vocabulary items that, and, but all that, are the, are the eyes, ears, mouth, nose, fingers, toes. That's your main vocabulary items. But within that, they're going to be picking up straight away, look at me, look at me, look at me, and dance with me, and my. Um, but you don't have to labor that point. You don't have to, you know, they, they, they don't have to know the grammar of that at this stage. Absolutely not. All right, here's another language presentation. And here we're talking about clothes. And here's Horsey again. And he's in the clothes shop with Lily and Jack. And you've got, and you can see you always have Bella Butterfly always has the vocabulary presentation there. Um, and again, of course, you always listen to the audio. There's the audio. That's the main thing that you're going to be listening to. Then Horsey has decided he likes these socks. He likes these black and, black and white spotty socks. He wants for our socks. Now then, um, what, how can we do, what, how can we follow this up? So there are lots of ways that we can do this. So let's think of some ideas for activities to learn about clothes. Well, first you can play dressing up. Um, and by playing dressing up, I mean just taking in old clothes that you've got, old clothes that your children had, old clothes that, any old thing really, um, and play dressing up. So, uh, and, then, and then you can say, what are you wearing? You know, or you go and get the blue jumper, you put on the purple hat. You can play shops, you can make clothes shops in the classroom. And you could pretend to be going in and buying things. You make, the, uh, make it into a real life situation. You could make big dolls from card, but very simple, very simple dolls from card. You can draw clothes on them, or you could make paper clothes and stick them on them. And then you could have a funny fashion show. They could be wearing their dressing up clothes. And then you could say, and here is Lillian looking beautiful. What's she wearing today? She's wearing red trousers. And a blue jumper. She looks lovely. And here is Andre. Today he's wearing black trousers and a white shirt, etc. And they can parade. And once you start them off with these activities, um, they will continue. All right? Whenever you do activities like this, you do also have to have quiet sitting down activities ready. Uh, for the children. There's, there's never any point in telling children to sit down and be quiet if you haven't provided them with something to do when they're sitting down and being quiet. So, um, you know, you say, sit down and uh, here's your worksheet. There's all, everything's provided in the learning stuff. There's the workbook. There's all these other um, photocopyable stuff available on websites and the teacher's book, etc. There's masses of activities there. Um, so if you are going to have a funny fashion show, you have it in the middle of the lesson, and then you have a quiet sitting down time afterwards, so that they go out from the class in a peaceful, quiet fashion. They don't go out. You don't want them to get overexcited, as we know. Um, but there are ways uh, of handling that. But I say that the main way is to be prepared and to have activities for them to do. Um, and here's, here's the song that goes with the, with the um, clothes on. So, do you want blue shoes? Do you want blue shoes? Yes, I do. Two blue, two blue shoes, two blue shoes for me. Two blue, two blue shoes, two blue shoes for me. Dum, dum. Uh, but it, it has a better tune. It's not that tune. It's a different tune. All right, anyway, so, you know, rhyming with that. And that's a nice, easy song for the children to do. And then, of course, it does go on. Do you want red shoes? Do you want red shoes? Yes, I do. Two red, two red shoes, two red, etc., etc. So you can repeat that endlessly. Um, 
All right, so the children get to learn to that way. Now then, uh, Learning Stars 2 has text on the page. All right. So by the time they get to Learning Stars 2, because um, there's all these, I'm not showing you the whole book. I don't. I, I think that maybe Jill was talking to you a bit about phonics um, and how to how to teach children to read. So this is throughout Learning Stars. We have phonics pages and uh, phonics exercises. Thank you, Eleanor. Yeah, I've got a lovely singing voice. Ha <laughs> ha. Thank you. Um, anyway, so um, so by the time they get to Learning Stars too, they can definitely start to read. Um, and here they are. Look, here you are. This is just what I was saying, that it's Saturday. No school today. Can we play school? Yes. And this is exactly what children do. I'm the teacher. Or she's the teacher. And it's school mum. And then mum's bringing them lunch at school. She's joining in with their make-believe game. Um, and uh, again, I'm not sure if um, Jill pointed this out or not, but there are star and butterfly words. Have a look here. Some of those words are in butterflies, and some of them are in stars. All right, and this is um, a sort of technique that will help the children to recognize the words. The words which are in the star, which are highlighted by a star, are high-frequency words which the children will learn to read through the look and say method, but that they're high-frequency words which cannot be um, spelt out. But the words in the, uh, sounded out, sorry, sounded out. The words in the butterfly are words which the children can read by sounding them out phonetically. So let's have a look here. All right, wait, it's, it's easier here, I think. So can, okay. Uh, it's a butterfly word. So you can sound that like can. We, you don't sound it out phonetically. You've just got to recognize that. It's a, it's a high frequency. You've got what, eh, where. It's not wet, it's we. Yeah? So it's irregular. So it, it, it's not sounded out phonetically for the children at this stage. For is sounded out phonetically. For opera, for. Okay? No uh, is a high frequency word. So uh, this is it's just a little signpost uh, which will help some of the children. What we've tried to do is to make the, um, the course right for all sorts of different learning styles, learning styles for our little learning stars, okay, so that some children will really relate to be able to think that, but other children, you don't even need to point it out, the butterfly words and the star words. But, but they're there for the children who, who get it in that visual way, who will be able to recognize that, work that out. Um, so by the end of Learning Stars 2, the children will be reading well. And this is right at the end, and here we've got Little Red Riding Hood, okay? And you've got your key, you've got your main key words here. So I'm Little Red Riding Hood, I'm the wolf, I'm Grandma, we're flowers and birds. Etc. And we can use all our different drama techniques for this. You're not my grandma. Help! And then all the flowers and birds come and have a go away, go away. And then little Red Riding Hood says thank you. Um, uh, so obviously you can use all those things that I was outlining in the earlier drama activities uh, ideas. You can use character. You can use a bit of costumes, but nothing, nothing elaborate. You can use emotion. How does Little Red Riding Hood feel? When she sees Grandma, she thinks it's her grandma. She feels happy. When she sees the wolf, she feels frightened. So she'll be saying the same thing in different ways if she feels frightened, or if she feels happy, etc. And you can use all that just to keep on repeating the language. How are the flowers and birds move? How are the flowers and birds speak? All those things will feed into it. Okay. Um, and then apart from, obviously, we have all these, you know, different the stories and, and the songs and everything, but it is very important at this age that children also need to learn important life skills. Um, you know, this is, they're, they're growing up, they're learning so much. So we have these throughout uh, learning styles. For example, very, very simple here, the difference between left and right, which is your left hand, which is your right hand. Um, and we have these sort of cross-curricular pages where they're learning all these life skills. And as you can see, when we're practicing the left to right, we do it as you teach it in the class. You always, 
If you're going to teach left to right, you always have your back to the children, put up your left hand. If you face the children and put up your left hand, they'll all put up their right hand, won't they? Because they'll just mirror image you. Um, so lots of activities like this. Here are, this is, this is um, another life skill. Obviously, they're all language-based as well, all our life skills. Um, this is uh, what clothes is it appropriate to wear in the winter and the summer? in hot weather and cold weather. So this is the kind of thing, you know, if you were doing it now in September, what are they going to wear? Are you going to wear your, when they start school, will they wear their shorts and a t-shirt? Well, probably not. They'll probably wear their trousers and their socks and their shoes. Yeah, they won't wear their sandals to school, but they will wear their sandals to school in the summer. So this is what the children have got to decide. Okay, again, it's all guided. It's through the, through the audio. You listen to the audio. Um, uh, to find out, to listen to what to do. And they've got to decide, they've got to tick what would, what would we like to wear you know, today, what's the weather like. Here I was talking about food and making, putting language into context. And this is uh, how we decide to make a healthy lunch box. All right? So we've got to decide what food would it be good for us to have every day in our lunch box. All right? And we've got to decide, are we going to say yes, please, to this food? We're going to say no, thank you. Right. And, um, and obviously, we're going to say yes, please, to water. We're going to say yes, please, to fruit. But we do know that the children would also sometimes like a lollipop. And so when it comes to the song, there's a song that goes, um, um, water in my lunchbox, yes, please, yes, please, water in my lunchbox, yes, please. And then uh, a lolly in my lunchbox, sometimes, sometimes a lolly in my lunchbox, sometimes, please. Because obviously you don't want the children bringing the lolly every single day, otherwise they're all on sugar, you know, overdrive and bad for their teeth, etc. But they could have one, you know, once a week or once a fortnight or something, you could allow it. You, don't, you, you have to be realistic when we're teaching these things as well. Okay. Um, here we are, and again, obviously, we're always trying to teach the children, encourage the children in good habits. This is in learning styles too, and um, you've got a little toothbrush here that's encouraging the child. I clean my teeth every day, and the toothbrush says, brush your teeth well. I drink water, and I eat fruit and vegetables, and the toothbrush says, I don't like sugar, etc., etc. So these are uh, all the different kind of life skills that we're doing. And we also, in uh, learning styles, we also have what we call these can-do statements. And these are from learning styles, too, um, where we, uh, the whole idea is by the, by the time they get to the end of learning styles, too, is that they are independent. They start to become independent learners, and they start to become very independent themselves as well. So... Big part. So with the things that are important to them, I can get up on time. It's very important that children learn to set their own alarm. And when the alarm goes up, to get up. <laughs> Rather than always relying on mum or dad, I can wash my hands before I eat. I can wash my face. I can wear my seatbelt. I can get dressed by myself. I can say my address. These are goals, actually. These are goals for the children. Some of them will have already achieved the goals. You know, like washing their face. I'm sure they can probably all wash their face. So that's a goal they can tick off. But they have to remember that they've got to wash their face every day. You know, and can they say their address? You know, it's a very, that's a very important uh, uh, um, skill that the children have to have. Um, and then we're coming to the end now. I'm just going to show you quickly some of the other thing, wonderful things that are in the Learning Stars. Because there's also this amazing digi book as well. So apart from the books, apart from the students' book and the activity book and the teachers' book, and then <coughs> all the online stuff as well, you can actually download this onto your computer, this digi book, and you can do it all either on your laptop or if you've got an interactive whiteboard, then that is just amazing in the class. So you've got the, the possibility of doing that. And I mean, I and I think that you know, if you have the opportunity to use digital to use technology, then definitely use it as well as the books. And don't use one or the other. I don't think, you know, you need paper as well. You definitely need the books as well. Um, but it, it's a variety. And again, this is all to do with the learning style. Some children will relate to it better digitally, and some people will love to have their books. 
So you could have a, a little bit of both. But well, that's it from me. So I'm wishing you all the best. But first of all, before I go, um, have you got any questions? Is there anything you'd like to ask me in the chat box? Any questions, put them in the chat box. <clears throat> Okay, thank you. Well, thank you very much all for coming. You're all welcome to come to Greece. You've invited us to, to go to Ukraine. We, you're all welcome to come over to Greece. Maybe I'll meet you again one day. But you're, you'll have to come here, I guess. I'd be getting on planes now. Too many grandchildren. <laughs> uh, do you use translation with kids? Uh, thank you, Ina. Thank you. Do, uh, do I use translation? With yes, sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Why not? If you've got it, I, I can even use any, anything that's at your resource. Yeah. Why not? I mean, when you translation, if they don't understand something, you can tell them what it means. You've got your own language there as well. I don't, I don't think you have to be precious, all English, all English. Obviously, I think it's very important that children realize that you like speaking English and that you enjoy it and you encourage it. But they know that you speak Ukrainian. So, you know, you, you can't tell them, I don't know what this word is in Ukrainian. You can't tell them that. No, yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, you know, verbal translation, verbal translation, rather than, I mean, at that age, I wouldn't get them writing down, this is that and this is the other. Any other? Uh, do any, yeah, I do, yeah, I do some of you translation, that's good. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Ah, ESL students. Oh, well, I don't know about that. You'd have to go over to Henry for an ESL student. Do you mean, I don't know, tell me what's sort of recommendation for an ESL. That might be a whole different thing. But I mean, actually, I mean, having said that, oh, so how, how long are the lessons? Well, for the three to four year olds. Um, sorry, hang on a second. Let me just ask her how, how long are the lessons? Well, actually, I mean, the thing is, the lesson is simple. So um, if you have half an hour, you can do a certain amount. If you have 50 minutes, there's all sorts of other activities that you can do um, within it. And I think with the, I think with the three to four year olds, you need to have very short chunks of activities. So rather than doing 50 minutes on one thing, you're going to do a bit of book, a bit of activity, a bit of um, moving around, a bit of the previous lessons activity. Um, 50 minutes is quite a long time for a three to four year old, so I don't know how long your lessons last for. And the book is very flexible, really. The book is very flexible. And there are so many different components. What was the digi components as well in the songs? Uh, exercise and translation sentences. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily, no, I wouldn't really do sentences translation. Not at this age. Not at this age, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. I'd maybe keep that for later. Uh, yeah. Aha, that's right, thank you. Yeah, now that's the competition. That's the competition. We're not supposed to mention flat hat. <laughs> thank you, anyway. <laughs> right, anything else? Over to you, thank Henry. Thank you, Jan. Uh, a great job. And uh, I'm sure everyone really enjoyed that. I'm going to yes. stop the recording quickly.